Welcome everyone to Kingwin Pro League 2015, week 7, day 2 with me, Monk. Lothar is currently traveling, so we're going to be having Monk again. Glad to have you on. Yeah, glad to be on, of course. Always a pleasure to be casting with you in the uh, Kingwin, um, the Kingwin Pro League, which is just a great league. We've seen a lot of great games, and we're going to have uh, five great matches today, plus a bonus match. We're going to tell you about that match later on. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise, but it will be... Um... It should be a nice one. Have you already, uh, I mean, prepared? Uh, not yet, but uh, I will be soon. Okay, can, cool. Can we talk about the bonus match now? Sure, why not? So basically what, what happens is uh, we're, we're going to be casting five matches today. I just wanted to uh, tell you who's going to be playing. We have Caldi versus Dog as a first match, then Kalento versus Amaz, who is going to be postponed to the very end of the day. So the last match of the day will be Colento versus Amaz. Then we have Trump versus Hyped, Brian Kibler versus Frezar, and then Brian Kibler versus Thai. So we have two Kibler games uh, on this fine day. And because Colento versus Amaz's time slot is being delayed to the very end of the tournament, uh, tr uh, Trump. Yes, of course. See, I always wow, do that stuff. Wow, I see. I see how it is. <laughs> I, I've done that every single time, Monk. You wouldn't believe me. Uh, Monk and I will be playing a match together with a very, very heavily prepared decks that have been refined to no end. So you will, again, be surprised by the extent of our deck building skills as soon as we get into that match. So there will be kind of a caster versus caster match uh, as a second match of the day. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Now, this is going to be... Uh, Pretty interesting day, I feel, as far as the matches that we have to cast. Because Kibler, I, we we haven't seen much of him. Um, we generally don't see much of him, I guess, overall in the Hearthstone scene. Yeah, it's true. Uh, we get to see two games of him, and uh, he always brings, I guess, somewhat interesting decks. He uh, he loves his priests, of course, but these days he's been favoring more of Mech Mage. He's been favoring more Druid. So decks that uh, can win a lot of games, I guess, is what you would call it. Yeah, it's it's decks that basically take the offensive. Uh, they put pr they put the pressure on, and you then have to respond as a result. Now his current score in the league is two two, so he's not really doing too bad. But he's seventh in his current group, which means as of right now, if he doesn't win the matches he's playing today, uh, he might not make it to the top five because the way that the Kingwin Pro League is you know uh, set up is the top five players get reinvited for season two of KPL. The top three go directly to the playoffs with quarterfinals, semifinals, and the grand finals. So the top three of each group want to get there. It's a round robin format, so players fight against every other player in their group to accumulate points to qualify for the playoffs. But Kibler, being seventh in his group right now, might not make it to the top five if he doesn't win. However, if he currently, if he wins his next two matches today, you know, one against Frezar and once against Thais. He actually makes it to the top five at that point. He even does, I think, um, possibly slightly better than Firebat. Yeah, um, a lot. Of, most of the players in uh, in our tournament have played about seven matches today, uh, and Brian Kibler's only played four, so he has a lot of catching up to do. I feel yeah. like, uh, like you said, this is going to be a very important week for all our players because if you just look at the standings right now, like I'm looking at, uh, all the players are pretty much at either four, three, or f uh, three, four records around that level and it's going to be this week that kind of decides what if you pull uh pull up the pack or not if you manage to get that top three to get into the playoffs if you manage to get into the top five to be reinvited next uh, season or if you drop out altogether and you're gonna to have to qualify by yourself uh, for the next season yeah, and the important thing is, you know, because all the scores are so close, which is something, you know, you have to expect when all the skill level is so, is so similar amongst uh, all the players in the league. The scores being so similar makes the tiebreaker matter even more. So when people lose a, a match, they want to win, you know, as many games as possible before they uh, they lose that match. Now, this is not going to be the end of the King win for this week, oddly enough. We've done, the, you know, the match on Tuesday. We are doing the matches today on Thursday. But there's also the King Win for Charity event coming up starting tomorrow. It's going to be the Easter edition of 2015. It's going to be going on through the weekend. We're going to have 16 players with a single, you know, first place, uh, first place win. It's going to be a Child's Play Foundation oriented charity. I think we've casted that in the past um, together. In fact, I believe. Yeah. The King Win, you know, for charity is supporting the Child's Play Foundation. So make sure to tune in. And if you want to donate to the cause, feel free to do so as well. That would be very appreciated. That being said, it's an ongoing support. Uh, but the charity event is the biggest focus of this specific support. So uh, on a second note, 
Kinguin Pro League, before we move on, is also looking for casters. Kinguin is looking for casters in general. If you want to get into casting for Kinguin, send your resume or your VOD, I guess, to them at esports at kinguin.net. And you might be reviewed and possibly invited that for a cast off in their studios. So there's a, there's a little bit of info floating around the stream and in the chat, possibly. So just, you know, keep an eye out for that. Don't, don't forget to send your stuff uh, before it's too late. It's an opportunity you need to seize if you want to get into the esports scene. Yeah, a bit more on the Kingwin for Charity tournament that will be happening this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Of course, uh, today we're going to be casting really great matches, but while we're going to be casting those matches, the new wing of Black Monk Mountain will actually come out today. So by tomorrow, you'll be able to see decks that have all these new cards, like Dragon Consort, I think, is the main card that everyone's looking forward to. How <laughs> new cards, like yeah. Dragon Consort, I guess, <laughs> and, and the and rest, that, well. <laughs> and the rest, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's a Twilight Whelp, I think, uh, but I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, Dragon Consort is going to be a possible game changer for some of the, the builds that we might see come up. And, you know, if Dragon Consort is a thing, um, then will, will people ever find a, a way to justify running Ren Black Hand as a way to deny Isera without having to resort to um, BGH, which obviously doesn't work on her. So if Paladins run, let's say, two Dragon Consort and Isera, will that lead to a possible use of Rand Black Hand as a surprise tech from some players. Um, I don't expect it, but you never know. And I, I'd like to see it happen over yeah. the weekend. You know, when new sets come out, like a lot of players in tournaments, they always try out new things. For example, Dark Wanix, when uh, in the Pinnacle 4 tournament, I believe, he tried out Gang Up Rogue. It didn't work out too well for him, but it was kind of fun. We're seeing a lot of players also try Drew to the Flame. And yep. uh, I don't know how well it's going to be going for them. Uh, Orange tried it in Sea Story Cup. He actually won with that deck. But actually, after Sea Story Cup, he regretted it running it. He's like, yeah, Shade is just better. We also saw, saw Tides of Time yesterday in the NVIDIA tournament. He ran Drew to the Flame. And uh, he had some like weird combos with it, like Mark of the Wild. And Mark of the Wild, yeah. yeah. That's uh... that. It was definitely very interesting. So yeah, I'm definitely be looking, uh, definitely looking for more experimentation with those cards. I'm definitely going to be looking at tomorrow's tournament, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, to see what kinds of new cards, new decks we're going to be seeing from these players. Yeah, that's really what I want to see mostly, like the innovation. Just, just you know, just this Tuesday we had Strife Crow with a Mill Rogue. I don't know if you saw it, but he brought it, I, and it had two Goblin Sappers. I was, I was just mind blown because. It feels to me like a card that doesn't really belong in that archetype, but Strife Crow obviously was experimenting with the idea of a mill rogue, and by you know putting the Goblin Sappers in, this is to me I think the first competitive appearance of that card. I've I've never seen it outside of that specific uh, game that Strife Crow played. Yeah, I have to say so. Strife Crow's entire lineup uh, this past week has been was really janky. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh it was mill rogue, <laughs> OTK warrior, and. Uh, Fatigue Mage like, or Grinder no, no, was, Fatigue? Yeah, grind, he calls it Grinder Mage. Yeah, that's kind of what not, it is. It's actually his favorite deck. Unfortunately, it's not as good as he would like it to be, but uh, Strife Crow, somehow he makes it work. Unfortunately, he didn't make it work against Firebat uh, this past week. Yeah, but it was pretty close. The series were really close on Tuesday. So, that being said, um, so the day, the, the matches that we're going to have today, the first one is going to be Caldi versus Dog. Now, we don't have the decks or the classes that the players are going to be uh, playing, but Dog is currently doing pretty well in the league at the moment. He's fourth of his group with a 4 2 score, one of which, one of the losses was uh, essentially a disqualification, if you will, because he was late to a match. So, if he'd shown up, maybe he'd have a better score, but as it is, he is currently 4 2, and his opponent, Caldi, is right behind him at 3-3 in the, the same group. So basically, if one of the two players wins, I guess the other one, they swap places, right? Yeah, exactly. If Dog wins this match, he'll essentially go up to 5-2 and a 5-1 record uh, if you discount the walkover. And right. that would pretty much put him at the top of the league along with Life Coach, who's currently sitting on a 4-1 record. So uh, Complexity Boys are doing pretty well, I would say. Yeah, Show and Dog are doing amazing right now. So Dog is potentially going to hit second place with his group today if he wins the match. Otherwise, Caldi might be able to get himself the fourth place to, for a possible re-invite or even a chance at getting into the top three for the playoffs. The other players playing today, you know, Trump versus Hyped. Uh, Trump, I have to say, doing pretty well on a competitive level uh, recently. You know, we talked about that, but he stepped up as a constructed play a lot in the past few months. Yeah, almost certainly. Uh, against his opponent, Hyped, I would say, He's even more successful than Hyped in tournaments lately. For example, yes. in the Xfinity Cup, he did a lot better than Hyped. Uh, he actually got top four. 
Unfortunately for Trump, though, top four is kind of like a curse for him. I believe in the last three tournaments he's uh, participated in, out of an average of 16 or 8, 8 to 16 players each, he's always hit top four, but he's never been able to make it to the final. So it's kind of a mental block for him. Yeah. Trump is also a player that a lot of players, uh, a lot of pro players have been respecting a lot, especially Hyped. I know Hyped when he, he tries to make Paladin deck lists, he actually uh, consults Trump for those deck lists. Oh really? I wasn't aware of that. I know that Hyped is like the rogue expert, if you will. I yes, guess exactly. like Firebad, Dog, Hyped, those three players I, I put at the top of the rogue innovation list effectively. Um, yeah. But for, for Paladin, like, Trump does have a lot of experience. Kuyuki used to be the go-to Paladin guy, but we haven't heard much of him, uh, like I guess in the recent days, of recent days. So Trump might have taken that that spot. Strivecrawl also played quite a bit of Paladin in the past, you know, in the past month, I think. Especially since GVG came out, Strivecrawl played an absurd amount of it. Yeah, uh, Strivecrawl, like uh, Trump, Strivecrawl, they they kind of both favor like safe play, I guess. So it kind of fits their personalities. I'd yeah. say also, actually, in the I just remember this in the Xfinity tournament. Trump actually knocked Hyped out in the round of 16, I think. And Trump did so because he kind of tried to hard counter Hyped's line up because he knew Hyped would break Rogue, obviously, so he brought three anti-Rogue decks. Yeah. It worked out pretty well. Yeah, if you if you play Conquest format, you have to target your opponent's lineup, which is one of the things that you can do, especially in a league system, right? Like, that's the best, posi the best way to do it, especially in a Kingwin Pro League, for instance. If you've looked at your opponent's match history and you find a common thread of decks that he always plays, you can try to exploit it. Now, Life Coach is an obvious exception because he always plays the same stuff, or at least very often, but somehow um, doesn't get punished too heavily for it because the decks are solid enough that they can withstand scrutiny and still pull out with wins uh, despite the fact that they've been studied very heavily. So. We have the lineups for the, the, the players that are going to be playing first. Kaldi versus Dog. Kaldi will be playing Shaman, Hunter, Druid. And Dog is bringing Mage, Rogue, and Warlock. No classes oh. overlap. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, I have to point out, Dog's Mage is going to be probably the highlight of this tournament, or of, of this series at least, because yesterday on stream I saw him playing Freeze Mage with Malagos in it. Oh, no Major Domo? I'm disappointed. <laughs> no I mean, that's way. always a possibility. I know, right? He just plays Maligos and Domo to make sure, you know, in case uh, he gets eyes blocked and he can get himself some really amazing, you know, Ragnaros. Set up the two secrets and turn to Rag. That's always, you know, a super reliable strategy. Yeah, meanwhile, we have uh, Kaldi. The most interesting thing about his lineup is probably the Shaman. Yeah. And whether that's a mech shaman or a mid-range shaman, I think that's probably because he knows Dog is known for being a druid player, so he's setting out to try to counter druid. We saw like uh, the mech, the new mech shaman that came out from Team Archon over the weekend at Sea Story Cup. And it's been doing really well against druids. I mean, Fel Reaver, right? If your opponent doesn't have a BGH, that's like eight to the face. Yeah, and like the, the the milling generally doesn't matter as much for Shaman because they typically don't even draw their deck that much. They don't dig through it. The only downside, I think, I would say one thing about Fel Reaver is that even if the milling doesn't matter in practice, I wish the cards weren't shown to you. So you wouldn't, you, like, you would at least say to yourself, oh, maybe I can get Lothab. No, sometimes you just know straight up. Um, well, my Lothab that, is gone, right? I think that's actually more valuable to, you actually it want is to valuable, see those cards. Yeah because you know your deck list better than your opponent mm -hmm. so if you see those cards being milled you know what else is in your deck so you can calculate the chances you'll draw those yeah. cards it's, ex um, it's just excruciating because sometimes it's hopeless after you've seen a card go you're like well i guess that's my game plan <laughs> that's yeah. out of the window uh, yep. But yeah, definitely a thing. I think Shaman, you know, already had a pretty good matchup against Druids in general. And this new Mech Shaman, uh, at least the modification to the initial Mech Shaman's list was, you know, it just made the matchup that much easier. Yeah. Also, uh, you say that the milling typically doesn't matter, but at Sea Story typically. Cup... Yeah, typically. But at Sea Story Cup, there was one game where um, it was a Shaman Mirror, actually, with Mech Shaman versus Midrange Shaman. And the Midrange Shaman got an Emperor Thorazian out. He reduced his rock biter to zero mana. And oh then my god. He got he got Neptilon and he got two of the one mana Murlocs off of Neptilon. So he you actually, milled literally twelve cards in one turn? Yeah, he actually milled uh it was uh someone versus Sixo, I believe. Uh yeah, anyway, someone versus Sixo and he actually milled Sixo out. And Sixo just like ran out of cards, ran out of threats, and that's how he won. Yeah, like Fel Reaver's drawback can be really punishing at times. Like when it does start 
especially like if you play it um, very late in the game. You know, when the opponent has 10 open mana and you feel feed him a Fell Reaver, it's going to be a bigger problem than if you played on curve on 5. Because on 5, it has to be answered right away. And typically, that means the opponent's going to play two cards perhaps on turn 5. Um, about that much if they answer it on curve to remove it with something like BGH plus a 2 drop or hero power. You can lose very little off of it, but late game, they can actually like go out of their way to mill you and remove every single threat from your deck at that point. Yeah. Well, we're actually getting the first decks from uh, both our players. Caldi will be opening with Hunter. We're not sure what type of Hunter that is. And Dog will be opening up with Warlock. And we're not sure what kind of Warlock that is. I mean, right now, there are about five versions of Warlocks floating around. There's there's a uh, handlock, there's demon handlock, there's demon lock, and then there's uh, so many variations of zoo. I know yeah. actually uh, four separate players hit number one legend uh, this past season or this past two, these past two weeks with zoo. Okay, so um, the the direwolf alpha hunt, well, not even haunted creeper. I've seen variants without creepers as well. Yeah, there's that have been so really many interesting. variants. Yeah, exactly. There's so many variants of that deck now. Um, a lot of them are actually they they lean more towards like. Mid range, mid range warlock yeah. they have two banes of doom they have uh, even melganus in it and can you really call it a zoo deck if they have melganus i'm not really sure at this moment i, I think i think warlock has two archetypes now they have <laughs> they have handlock on one extreme and then you've got mid range warlock with a huge spectrum ranging from aggressive mid range to control oriented mid range and that, yeah. that that's maybe the the best i could do because zoo as we know it or as we you know perceive it is fairly like fairly gone it, it doesn't really exist as a as as what we used to refer to it as it, it's kind of weird as a deck it, the, the way it phased out but now it's evolved uh in super zoo 2 yep. which is like we're a mid-range demon lock we're just about to get ready to into the first game and we're gonna go into hunter from caldi dog with the actually it's gonna be a zoo deck so fairly predictable this is the zoo wing of black rock mountain so yeah, i would expect boss. a lot of zoos Exactly. A lot of Zeus. You mean lightning? <laughs> yeah, the Dota hero Zeus, of course. Yeah, exactly, of course. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Zeus. Um, so, Zoo versus Hunter. Explosive Trap is a very valuable card, and I'm almost surprised. I guess he wasn't expecting Zoo, hence he threw it away. But that is otherwise a card I would venture to say is great to keep. But that I mean, double Mad Scientist opener is just crazy. This is almost the uh, ideal hand. For Caldi, to be honest, like you have yeah. double Mad Scientist and Unleash the Hounds. Those are those two cards are exactly the two cards that you want. Also, this Flame Imp from Dog. It's actually usually like Flame Imp is always what you would want to draw on turn one, but against Hunter, it's kind of somewhat of a detriment because Hunter has a lot of one two, or two ones that can trade into the Flame Imp, and um, like it also does three damage to yourself. And against Face Hunter, that's not what you want though. But to yeah. Dog's credit. He does have a Voidwalker to put behind the Flame Imp, so he'll be able to protect it fairly easily. Yeah, I was going to say that Voidwalker is going to be exactly the reason why he probably feels somewhat confident the Flame Imp can get value, because that being able to protect it is great. And he's going to go for the race instead of developing the Argent Squire. Uh, I can't really fault him for that. I guess you could play Argent Squire when you think a trap's going to be set up. Afterwards, it's going to be a little tough to deal with. Oh my goodness, Caldi. What is that? I mean... Basically, at this point, Caldi just has to survive till turn four. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's about it. Yeah, he just has to knife juggler, coin, unleash the hounds. Honestly, Caldi drew pretty much perfectly uh, so far in this game. If only yeah. that abusive sergeant were a Lepernome, perhaps, or like a, a Worgen Infiltrator. Worgen Infiltrator. Was, like, slightly better, but this is in like the 95 percentile of hands that you could possibly draw against yeah. the deck like so. Because the double Mad Scientist, you know, once the first trap's out, Zoo is like, okay, you know what, it's unlikely he's got another one on the back end, and then you play the second Mad Scientist. Although in this case, I wonder, wouldn't it be almost slightly better that the uh, second Mad Scientist were a explosive trap straight up, that you could just drop at whim instead of having a minion that can be triggered a little later than you like? Yeah, very possible. Um, when I was at the uh, CN versus EU tournament, Kalento, I was having a conversation with the Kalento, and he told me that Actually, explosive traps are better than Mad Scientists in this matchup. Um, yeah. A large majority of the time, because you can just play them non-reactively. If you if you like if you're top decking a Mad Scientist at later stages of the game, for example, uh, you won't be able to play it, and sometimes it's just one turn too late. 
So it's funny here how Dog is putting his opponent in the position where he has to unleash before the jugglers. Like, we know the hand, so we obviously know that Kelly doesn't want to unleash here. Uh, but he's going to be forced to, so he's not going to get the knife hits that he really wants to be fed. I mean, I, I think Kaldi is pretty happy about this, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it's not, it's not a bad one, but it, it's just that those knives would have been so devastating. Even more devastating, I guess. So, actually, Kaldi, now he can suicide his mad scientist and just go all for face because uh, there will be explosive trap up and Dog will have to clear it. But I think right now he's considering whether something like a Defender of Argus or maybe even a Void, um, a void Terror might be able to buff some of these creatures out of range or just steal their health. So, Funny enough, I think Kaldi was playing a Freezing Trap. Was it Kaldi or Frezar was playing Freezing Trap in their Aggro Hunter recently? Um, yeah, but I saw true. on KPL. That was also a little unusual, but uh, I wonder Most if it's going to be another trick. Most players, if they play a different trap in their list, it's a snake trap, but I have seen yeah. a freezing trap before. Oh um, my goodness. A little too a little too late. Yeah, just slightly too late. It's too. freezing trap. Oh, interesting. Okay. You all so, so, so <laughs> I'm a little surprised. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised because the way Caldi telegraphed it, uh, because he traded in, it uh, was obviously freezing trap. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous turn, Caldi could have gone for the... Uh, more risky play and just bait out the explosive trap, but yeah, that worked as well. Yeah, Kelly yet, does another, fine. yet another mad scientist comes on the field with the in conjunction with the knife jugger, so uh, almost certainly there's gonna be explosive trap coming down now. I think you just, yeah, I, it, it should be. I mean, although we have seen Frezzar run two freezing traps and nothing else, so I'm, I'm still. Uh... I'm still very much unsure what's in his list completely. Yeah, this is going to be pretty good. So if this indeed is going to be a freezing trap, then then uh, dog will have a way to proc it. If it's an explosive trap, it's still going to be okay because the Argent Squire will probably survive. Yeah. Interestingly, though, dog hasn't had to tap this game. Yeah, that's true. He got it. He got hit with one hound and his own flame map. No life taps been played the, yet, which I feel it's kind of weird but against hunter it's almost a dream scenario where you get a hand that you can play pretty much as you go without having to life tap and not put your health at risk i think that's a pretty good position yeah right now actually Kelly does have some options but they're all like very aggressive options and because dog he drew fairly well as well in the beginning of the game just flooding the board um Kelly, he he has like, the Leroy Jenkins and the Wolf Rider actually don't help with clearing the board at all, so he might not be as in as good a position as we kind of hoped. So if that's a freezing trap, I guess you just knife juggler Iron B. Cal? I don't know. I, I can't see what else. If that is, in fact, freezing trap. Yeah, you know, I think uh, one of the reasons that Caldi might be putting freezing trap in this deck is because he knows Dog is a Druid player, uh, he fa dog favors Druid over any other right. class, and the Freezing Trap is just the best card in the, or one of the best cards in the Hunter deck against Druids. Unfortunately, Dog is going to be playing Zoo, so the Freezing Trap isn't as valuable. Like, can you imagine if this game, this, like, what happened, the, the position of this game, if that were an Explosive Trap instead of a Freezing Trap, the first yeah, one? Yeah, the trap. first one would have been devastatingly good. Yeah, and wow, this one, again, like, Kaldi is punished for putting two Freezing Traps in his deck. Yeah, that M did nothing. Uh, as you said, I think he might have been playing around Druid as a kind of lead play. Oh man, he finds the Unleash after playing the Knife Jugglers already two turns back to back. But he's going to be able to get some value out of that one. But you pop the spider, but then what if? What if? Yeah. Oh, what so, if? <laughs> so you, you can actually just pop the spider with the uh, Knife Juggler and then Unleash. Yeah, probably for two, uh, two hounds. Let's play again. So he's valuing the... He's valuing the Unleash for a later turn, I guess. Well, he's, goes with uh, it's a good one now. The thing is, if you if you pop the Spider first, um, and the, the oh, knife yeah, yeah. hits your juggler, right. you get punished really heavily. Yeah, so it's just a more risky play. So yeah. the, the issue now here is that Zoo, it's very good at taking board position, but it's not very good at taking board position back. Back, yeah. yeah there's exactly. no uh, there's no swing back mechanic, unfortunately. Once it loses it, it's pretty much gone. And that, as, as we said, you know, Caldi's hand was as good as it was going to get in that position. But still, I mean, this 8-8, if Caldi can find lethal soon... Oh, wait, that might just be it. Yep, that's it. Good game. Yeah, well played. 
played. So that's 11, 12, 13, 14. Is he one off? No way. No, the knives, the knives should do it, right? Well, it might. Um... Oh, he has exact lethal. Never no, mind. Yeah, what am I like, talking that, about? That is exactly Doesn't even need the knives. Yeah, exactly. Exactly lethal with the plus five. All right. I, I mean, Kelly just counting it up a bit, making yeah. sure he has it. Doing hunter math. Yeah, no reason to like, in this situation, there's no reason to play after a game so fast. We saw uh, some uh, kind of shenanigans with Ignite. <laughs> quote, quote, missing lethal. Well, yeah, I mean, he saw it. It just wasn't quite there. Yeah. Um, that was a little unfortunate. When I saw that play, I saw him go about it, and I was really exasperated. I was like, no, don't do it, though. No. And he felt really bad. He posted a post on Reddit about that and how the uh, the misplay affected him. But he still felt like it was, you know, one of his best runs in competitive Hearthstone, nonetheless. Yeah, so uh, just a summary of that game. I just feel like both players drew fairly well. Yeah, but Caldi, I feel like he got kind of the nuts in the fact that he got two mad scientists and two knife jugglers to unleash the hounds in his opening hand. Exactly the cards you want. Um, that being said, it was still a fairly close game until the end because Caldi had in two freezing traps instead of two explosive traps. If Caldi ran two uh, explosive traps and no other traps in his deck, he would have won. That game, yeah, that would have been like even more of a complete blowout. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel like that last kill command was a really big thing because besides that, what deals five damage? There's nothing in the deck. I mean, a bow would have do it, done it over two turns. And if the giant lives, you know, if there's a power overwhelming soul fire, you're dead. So you still have to handle the giant uh, in Caldi's position. So finding that kill command was a way for him to seal the game before he was in any real trouble. But yeah. I wonder how, uh, how well that'll do. I mean, there's no druid in Dog's lineup. So if Caldi targeted that, that's going to be a bit tricky because now Caldi still has to do with, deal with Zoo deck coming from Dog. Yeah, I don't feel like Dog is too unhappy about his Zoo losing because he does have to face against Shaman and he does have to face against Druid. And I think uh, Zoo versus Druid is a very good matchup. And Zoo versus Shaman, if it's the Mechanical or the Mech Shaman, uh, Zoo is going to have a really good matchup against that as well. Yeah, I, I feel like this, like this Zoo deck losing to Hunter is not really even unexpected. Um, these days with the double explosive trap, it used to be the case that that was a really lopsided matchup sometimes for Zoo, if you remember. Um, without explosive traps, Hunters had very few ways of really punishing Zoo for taking the board. But nowadays it feels like the refinement of, and you know, the addition of Mad Scientist as well, and the refinement of the Face Hunter deck has made it so it's really tough for Zoo to establish themselves with the loss of the Soulfire tempo play. Yeah, that Soulfire was just such a key card. Unfortunately, it being nerfed to one mana, I mean, one a ma one mana difference, especially from zero to one, is so huge, and you just don't see it uh, so much anymore. Yeah. That being said, there's always like power overwhelming, I guess. It, it still works, yeah. It still does what Soulfire used to do if you have a board. The problem is you can't just life tap top deck for the win at the very end of a game if you don't have a minion that can be enabled. Um, and that is usually what the Hunter tries to do in that matchup, is they try to deny you that board presence through, you know, Unleash the Hounds plays or, you know, Explosive Traps, which then means you can't attack with that minion very often. All right, so we're going to be moving on to the second game. I'm not sure what deck uh, Caldi's going to be picking because his Hunter is now locked out. So he's got Shaman and Druid. Dog might... I feel like Dog's lineup is pretty well tailored to beat Shaman and Druid. Like Mage, Rogue, and Warlock back-to-back -back, uh, against Shaman and Druid. That feels to me like Dog's got a really good chance at this. Okay, we're uh, getting the next lineups from both players. Dog will be sticking to his uh, very tested and tried-and-true Zoo deck. Whereas Caldi will be, will be playing Druid. And of course, that is going to be a very good matchup for Dog. Um, Zoo versus Druid. Back from the olden days of Hearthstone. Where Hearthstone first became competitive. That was yeah. one of the classic matchups. Zoo versus Druid. And it was a matchup that was typically very favored for the for the Druid. Or for the Zoo The Warlock player, player yeah. yeah. But exactly. Zoo weakened slightly. I mean, as, as we said, you know, that loss of Soulfire really did play a big role. And Swipe is the only tool that deals with Imp Gang boss in one sweep. Uh, where every class, maybe Priest as well, with something like a, sh you know, Wild Pyro, Shadow Word Pain. Um, but generally speaking, or Shadow Madness, generally speaking, Swipe actually hits the Imp Gang boss for four. And then the Imp spawns, and then the one damage is dealt to it. So that there, it really just doesn't leave anything behind. Um, and I think Druid has that, that chance over every other class uh, yeah. to just steal games on top of that with Innervate, Wild Growth. So if they do get that against Zoo, they're still going to be pretty well, uh, pretty well off. That 
actually is uh, confirmed to be a bug by Ben Brode. Is it? But, uh, yeah, it's actually a bug, but uh, right. it hasn't been fixed yet. So we might actually be seeing it, especially with the hands that we see both players have right now. Wild Growth, Keeper, the Grove, Swipe. All he needs is uh, throw away the Emperor and yeah. get an Innervate. And that's going to be the ideal hand against Zoo. Pretty much. It's going to be as close to it, especially if you find... Um, like Innervate is great. Wrath could also help quite a bit. Shade of Nax isn't even terrible in this position because you can let it sit. If you got the Wild Growth, it curves. Uh, if you don't need the Keeper right away, if there's no Flame Imp or Knife Chuckler, you can always curve it with that. Uh, and the Swipe, I mean, with the Pop Taunted Creeper, that's pretty much godlike, honestly. Wild Growth, turn two or turn one. If you find a three drop. Oh, man. Chaldi's hand is crazy for Zoo. Yeah. And also, um, just talking a little bit about dogs, particular zoo deck, it's probably one of the lowest cur curving zoo decks I've seen. Because I have seen zoo decks that include cards like Dr. Boom, Malganis, um, some uh, obviously some. Yeah, Doom Bane of arts. Doom, even. Yeah, Kalento even uh, got rank one legend recently with a Sylvanas Windrunner in his quote unquote zoo or mid range warlock deck. Yeah, mid range warlock. I think that deck's been tweaked around a lot with, um, or tinkered with rather, since the advent of GVG. That's a deck that's been around. And with the addition of the M Gang boss, I think it's making. And the Demon Wrath that's coming up as well. Like, I need to mention that because that card enables Norwegian eggs. It doesn't really matter if your creepers die. It protects it it protects your M Gang boss, Flame Imps, and Void Walkers, Mistresses of Pain from removal. It's just a crazy card in general. Uh, yeah, pretty crazy indeed. Uh, speaking of another crazy card, Imp Gang boss, but unfortunately for Dog, that will be dealt with fairly abruptly with the swipe. Is that this feels said, pretty like, bad though. Do you really yeah, do that now or do you pop the spider? Yeah, like right now I feel like swipe actually isn't even that good here. So Caldi, I think like I think he can actually play it more slowly here because he has the swipe as a backup for later turns. So he can even play something like the pilot and shredder here. Yeah, I like I like the pilot shredder a lot more than keep of the grove. Yeah, um I feel like the silencing a Nubian or sorry, silencing the uh, the spiders. The Hunter Creeper, it's actually not that impactful. You, usually you wanna, you prefer to si silence something like the Nubian Egg. So you can even save the silence. Right, so Dog has a Sea Giant almost ready to go. If he pops the spiders, does that, is that enough to play the Giant? No, it's gonna be one off still. So minimally possible. Yeah, slightly off. Uh, he's thinking, I think, about trading into the piloted shredder and that's gonna be a fairly good trade three five it's like a senjin with an ability trading to pilot shredder. yeah oh wow i hope he doesn't play into swipe because that's gonna be uh, he's gonna have to right yeah oh, that's man. actually oh that's excruciating yes this is a terrible position although if galdi swipes the non-imp gang boss target then the imp doesn't die that's true that's so like it's, the it's, one good thing it's actually a little confusing but swipe, I think how the programming works is that swipe works with how it seems on the screen, because like the big claw goes first, and then the side swipe goes next. Next, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So basically, the four damage gets dealt first, and then the one damage AOE gets dealt. Yeah, that's the way you see it from a visual standpoint. All right, so what? I'm pretty sure we're gonna be seeing a swipe here, but. Oh, is there an argument to be made for just killing the Voidwalker with your 4-1 and keeping the swipe? Or are you afraid of Lotheb on the back end of this? And then you're stuck in a pretty weird spot. It's just that the 3-1 Imp Gang boss is kind of annoying, so... I'm not sure. I think it is possible that you can save your swipe for another turn, though. Because, again, your hand quality is so good that... Uh, swiping might just uh, like you can pretty much delay the swipe till later. Turn yeah, off. Like, until you really not, need it. There's not that much power in the board, um, and I think I, actually like a possible emperor could be good here just to pretty much add more innervates. Oh here. man, keeper the grove swipe turn six. That's gonna be disgustingly good for him. He's gonna be able to pop the spider, then remove the those spiderlings that come out of it. You know what? That's probably what we're gonna be seeing here. And also oh. like. Five mana Sylvanas, three mana Pilot and Shredder. Oh, uh, hello, he Doomguard. Just, he can just take more damage here, and eventually, if he really needs to, he'll be able to heal up with a six mana Ancient of Lord. 
So my guess here is the dog has to kill the emperor. I think that's rule number one of facing off against Druid. So he can play the spider, pop it, then play his own, then play Sea Giant if he wants to. Yeah, so he's popping the spiders, like, it plays a bit more into swipe, I guess, but uh, he'll be able to play the Sea Giant this way. So he's basically forcing his opponent to have BGH. And it might work out pretty well, actually, because the swipe doesn't really kill the Sea Giant, despite the fact that it's been reduced to 3 mana. There's no follow up to deal another 4 to the 8 8. Oh, yep. This is no good. Um, yeah, no. There's a, let's see. If he, I guess the play here is still Keeper of the Grove and Swipe, right? Yeah, you pop the spiders and you swipe the 2 3. Or do you silence the spiders? No, you, you pop the spiders. Yeah, you silence the spiders just for the sake of it, <laughs> and then they stay alive. <laughs> and, that, and you just troll yourself. Well, what I'm curious about though is like, like he had a really, really sick start, but Dog's board is in such a good spot right now with that Sea Giant and the possible Doom Guard on the back end. Yeah, Dog did a, has been doing a really good job making plays really awkward for Kaldi. He's not, uh, he's not playing like the most powerful turns each single turn. Like for example, yeah. the previous turn he had an option to uh, to clear that pirate, the four one pirate, but he didn't do so because he wanted to play around swipe. So again, not not the most powerful turns, but He's just playing around a lot of stuff, and he's playing around the exact cards that Kaldi has in his hand. And also not playing around the cards that Kaldi doesn't have his, in his hand. In his example, hand, yeah. For example, a BGH that Kaldi doesn't have. Dog, Dog would be devastated if BGH were to come out, but he's going to be pretty happy to see that his Sea Giants at least going to stay up. Because 8 damage to the face of the Druid right now is pretty meaningful. Oh man, he can get another 5 if he plays Doomguard right now. Oh wow, and it gets followed up by a Taunt Minion. That is as good as it's gonna get. You lose the Egg, do you really care? I don't think so. Yeah, and now there's gonna be two minions that you can't deal with on the board. Oh, that's so much damage. 13 damage all in the face. Wow. Keep of the Grove, that's no help. Yeah, just... Not only is there... No cards that really help the situation. And, uh, I think that's game, actually. You yeah, have to heal yourself game. with Ancient of Lore to 14, but then you can't even kill the Voidwalker, so you still die. Yeah, you're dead. Good game. There's nothing you can do, unless I'm mistaken. There's literally not a way for him to win. You can't even pop your Paladin Shredder here. For, to like, for an unstable ghoul or some yeah, other exactly. such shenanigan. Yeah, there's nothing. Wait. Oh, ain't no. There's no. I can't. And maybe Ancient of Lore for draw, but what do you hope to find? I can't even... Uh, some Innervate, I guess? Innervate yeah, plus... for what? Hero Power? <laughs> That's gonna do nothing, unfortunately. Maybe double Innervate, but there was... I can't even think of a thing that it would have done. So that's going to be game here for Dog. He's going to be taking it with a zoo deck against Druid. We did mention um, that it was a little bit of an expected outcome in general against Druid, despite the fact that, uh, you know, they got Emperor. They got a few new tools. Zoo also got new tools. And even even though, if, you know, Swipe can deal with M-Gang boss, it's still a problematic minion. Yeah, and a lot of matchups uh, involving Druid, especially against the aggressive matchups, like like against Druid versus Mech Mage, Druid versus Tempo Mage, and Druid versus Zoo, you often see that a Druid gets these pretty insane starts, like uh, like with Wild Growth and Innervate, but Druid still wins because the matchups are just so favored. Yeah, so the next match, uh, now that you know Hunter's locked, Warlock is locked, Dog has Mage and Rogue left, and Kaldi's got Shaman and Druid. Do you think he's going to go for his Druid again against Rogue and Mage? That feels like a really hard lineup to beat with Druid. The um, mage is typically pretty okay with it. Well, the, the the trend is in the Conquest format is that pretty much the the deck that you lost with previously, you uh, keep. players players tend to like keep it. It's like some ridiculous statistic that Fireback came up with like 80 plus percent of the time that that's what happens. And it, unfortunately, it makes players a bit predictable. Alright, well, Dog is going to go for Rogue, and Kaldi is going to stick to Druid. Now, that doesn't mean the Rogue isn't necessarily going to win. You know, it's been a subjective debate, actually. Some people say, you know, Rogue has an incredible matchup against Druids, but... Um, and, and I think they do have a pretty good one. They're playing the Tinker's version, but to say that it's... 
especially now with the advent of Emperor. I think the Emperor Thorson changed the matchup enough for uh, for Druids that it improves their chance against Rogue drastically. Like yeah, Emperor Thorson is so sick against Rogues. Yeah, you can also put the Emperor in Rogue, but mm -hmm. I feel like it's just so much more impactful for Druid, more so than any other deck. I mean, Freeze Mage possibly, but there's no Freeze Mage in this matchup, right? Um, Although Rogue's... Dog does play quite a lot of it, to be honest. It's true. It's true. true. He's uh, he does favor Freeze Mage over Mech Mage most of the time. Yeah, but just in, in this next match between Rogue and Druid, there's not going to be any Freeze Mages. I would hope not. Or yeah, we, I hope we not. We got that completely wrong. Well, it's possible that you, you said he was experimenting with some weird mage with Malagos. Um, maybe we'll, we'll see that. Well, it's basically Freeze Mage, uh, and instead of Pyroblast, there's Malagos because if you if you get down the Emperor, you can yeah, you can just OTK can with Frost Bolts and Ice Lances. Yeah, exactly. Oh man, it's like it's like the uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice with Echo of Medif and Duplicate trick that people try to pull off. Uh, it's like a really really tough OTK deck to play. So I wonder if. Like, you might as well just play Malagos and regular Freeze Mage to make it more consistent. Yeah, that's true. So, a lot of players have been saying, like, uh, so the Druid versus Rogue matchup, like we said, like, it's very hotly contested. Um, a lot of players say that Druid is favored, and a lot of other players say it's Rogue favored. But yep. from what I hear, like, no one actually says it's more than 60% favored either way. And most no. players say it's 55, 45 in one direction. And I think a lot of it is just like player opinion and player experience, especially some rogue specialists say, oh, like I'm good at the game. I'm good at rogue. So rogue is 55, 45, right? Yeah, I've got I've got a better edge, let's say, over Druids than they do over me. And interestingly enough, too, um, I, I think it's like the uh, so people were saying that, you know, priest versus Druid priest wasn't even that bad. I think a lot of the time matchups like these or opinions like these al almost come down to how many thought steals you got that landed right, um, as opposed to another player who might have had the exact same deck as you but got really awful thought steals. Because your matchup will vary a lot, your perception of it based on how well you get, you know, the control threats against other control decks. Oh, we're seeing the starting hands from both players. Yep. Neither player has a very good starting hand, I would say. Dog is really looking for. Uh, a combination of good spells and good minions. Meanwhile, Kaldi is just looking for those wild growths and innervates. <laughs> yeah, that seems like a very tough mulligan choice. Well, Dog Dust does get his uh, deadly blade flurry backstab, oddly enough. And there goes the wild growth. Not going to be coined out, I suspect. There is no three drop and no real reason to do it. Ooh, someone opened Tyrion Fording. Congratulations to them. Yeah, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I saw that at the bottom left. Somebody, maybe we'll see that next time we do the delay sync testing. All right, uh, well growth for the possible coin belcher or Judo Claw. Yeah, either would be just uh, incredible here. That being said, Dog's hand, because he got that Violet Teacher, it's looking to be a lot better than normal. Usually, yeah. like the way you beat Druids, um, and the way I see Rogues close out the games really early, is with a turn four play of why the teacher prep into either eviscerate or sap to clear the board and then the druid doesn't get wild growth so they don't have the six mana to to swipe and hero, and power, hero power yeah and if you basically if you get that rogue play of why the teacher prep something to clear the board and the rogue doesn't or the druid doesn't get wild growth you pretty much win the game at that point because it's just too much pressure of like the violet teacher tokens and the violet teacher going down at you every single turn all right, so Kaldi finds a shade, but that thing is a little bit late. Uh, he'd probably have loved to see it in his earlier hand, so to play it on curve, but still not too bad. Thing is, it won't really threaten Kaldi. I mean, dog, as long as he's got a blade furry ready to go. Yeah, that's true. He has a uh, like. There's kind of a fork in the road here. Does he play the three drop uh, yeah. and uh, save his coin so he has more options later into the game, or does he play the five drop or one of the five drops? And that's the five drops are more power, but they're also more vulnerable to. Uh, exactly what I said, Violet Teacher, Violet prep, teacher. Sap. prep Sap, and because you don't have a swipe in your hand, you're going to be very very vulnerable here. Whereas if you play the Shade, Violet Teacher, Prep, what, what are you going to prep? Fan of Knives, right? Oh, well, speaking so of Prep, like... there's, I mean, I guess you could Prep Blade Flurry if you felt like it. Um, that gives you a board, and you can, you take your care of the Shade, but it's such a little Blade Flurry value that you probably want to get away from it. And he does, but he finds Lothab, I was going to say. If he finds Lothab in the next two turns, that could be huge for uh, the Druid player. He does. Oh, he's actually considering Keeper of the Grove here. That's really interesting. 
I would think that this would be like kind of like almost an automatic load that play. Yeah, it feels to me like that because you can snowball that out of control. You can, you know, get a foothold on this board. But the the rogue can't contest very easily. Yeah, also like Lotheb is just the best answer in the game to Vile Teacher. A 5-5, five, five, it, it's a 5-5, five, five, prevents the Vile Teacher from spawning any tokens essentially. Yep. Well, Dog does have the backstab for 5 mana, so he's going to be able to take care of Lotheb, but... With the Deadly yeah. Poison... Not only is he able to take care of Lotheb, but we're, we're, again, we're seeing the strong points of Rogue. Um, if this Vile Teacher survives in another turn, Dog can get some crazy combos with preparation, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil into Blade Flurry. Yeah, right. I don't think she'll live, but yeah, I mean, we from our know. perspective, we see a it's rat over. And yeah, it's uh, it's unlikely the, the, she'll shoot the next day. The Lotheb did do its job though. It did. Because now there only one uh, five teacher token spawned, only one apprentice spawned, so. Still a pretty good deal. Yeah, and the good thing also as well is that the shade now survives. So I mean, the dog has to answer it. Whereas if you traded it last turn, it was a three-three, so it died of the vile teacher. Now it's alive, and now dog has to handle that. Yeah, now it's out of uh, blade flurry range. Yep. Oh well, maybe not anymore. <laughs> That'll solve the problem. It's not a bad blade flurry either. Like it's not the best one ever seen, but it's not terrible. They'll yeah, do the I job. Mean... It's two cards that you use the blade flurry plus the deadly poison, and you essentially you killed off like a, a Lothab and a keeper of the grove, and a shade with it. So it's not too bad. Uh, and, and if you include the the Lothab that was killed with the, it, I yeah, guess. The, the, yeah, the backstab that's like kind of like a three for three, something like that. And if you include the via teacher and the wrath, it's a four for four. So yeah, it kind, it, of even. it kind of evens out honestly. It's it's been about. Uh, it's been about card for card so far, and Kaldi's gonna race ahead in card advantage for now, though. Uh, getting himself the Ancient of Lore with Innervate Coin in hand. That opens up options in the late game. Yeah. Uh, a key card in Kaldi's hand right now is that Ragnaros, and Ragnaros, along with Dr. Boom, they're two of the cards that just rogues really struggle to deal with. Rogues, actually, just in general, they struggle to deal with legendaries because Dr. Boom, Ragnaros, Harrison Jones, and Lothab, I think those are the four neutral cards that rogue struggle uh with the most yeah ragnaros ah. is such a big problem so what i'm saying uh what I, where i'm heading towards with that is that is ren blackhand a good inclusion into rogue decks i was thinking about that yesterday you know i was i actually wanted to, to, to talk about it with somebody uh on skype and hit them up because i i my initial review of ren blackhand was a horrible one i was like you know what this is the new hemet nesting wary and then i've been thinking well what if paladin dragon becomes a thing and isara gets played and bgh doesn't work you have to play shaman for hex and everything and you end up you know taking in too many silences perhaps for the faster decks um what if you just play ren blackhand and something like an oil rogue and you can still handle like handle a pretty big array of the metagame by just taking that one card in because it's already useful against most of the stuff that gives you problems yeah but. that being said like you need dragons in your deck if you, yeah. if you play red <laughs> if you play, that's right that's right so you'd have to play dragon <laughs> rogue. okay right, so dragon rogue caldi goes for the most more risky option but he gets reward for it. Rag hits the target, and Dog doesn't have an answer for it at all, so... You want to talk about reward, though? Look at this hand from Dog. It's not too bad. He's got the burst if he feels like going for it. Yeah, he's just missing that Blade Flurry. How good would this hand be with Blade Flurry, though? It would be disgustingly strong here. Like, it's just... It's, it's one... It feels like it's just a tiny bit away from working perfectly. Um, but if he reduces the cost of South Sea Deckhand and Deadly to, you know, to, to zero, and Tinker Sharp Sword three, then Prep gives Tinker Sharp Sword a zero cost. So if he finds a sprint, um, he can still do what he wants, I guess, on the back of that. I mean, Blade Flurry would allow him to get it. Like, you use Sprint for seven on nine, and then you find Blade Flurry. I mean, it's just so risky at this point to not trade into the board, but... Yeah, we do have to consider though that the druid is coming up on turn nine, and we all know what that means. Oh, he's gonna go for this play. All right, so he's probably gonna be. Uh, do you think he's gonna be trading away? No way. Anything? I think you just go full face here for burst, right? Yeah, he's he sees that like he's running out of cards, and there's a Ragnaros on the board that he can't deal with. So you pretty much have to go all in at this point, and he's gonna be relying on a draw like an eviscerate perhaps to finish off the game. Yep. 
Well, let's see what Caldi finds here, because he doesn't have any piece of the combo. In fact, I'm not even sure I saw any of them. I didn't see the last Savage War nor Force of Nature last game. But I'd be oh, surprised if he wasn't running it. But Yeah, I mean, like, with this type of druid, uh, it's, it makes not, no like, sense, it's, right? it's definitely not ramp druid. So, yeah, I would think it doesn't make too much, too much sense not to run Force of Nature Savage War in this deck. Uh, that being said, I think Caldi can, can kind of guarantee he can survive just by... Throwing down a keep or throwing down um, a druid of the claw and a sludge belcher, both of them, yeah. Yeah, both of them, and then if you really want to be really safe, you can uh, you can innervate out and coin out a hero power as well. If we just have on nine health away from an on combo eviscerate or a second si, and plus you like have all these taunts anyway, but you are yeah. playing around some two card combo that can kill you. Think this is you, gonna be a you trade into the five one, right? Oh yeah, almost certainly. You just don't want that damage on the board. You want to be playing as safe as possible right now. Now he's because... thinking about innervating that hero power, and I think he should at this point. Might as well commit because your hand is already playable from what you've got, so you don't really worry about lacking the mana for the future turns. It's more about living. I like living. You like living? Life is good. I hate it. All right, so does he find something? He finds a sap. That's really no help. I mean, it's not horrible, but um, Emperor Sap, I guess, is gonna have to be his play. I just don't know. Does he? Does it, he sap rag? That's so much value from Emperor, though. Reducing all the <laughs> remaining cards in his hand by one. Oh my God, that's infinite. Zero cards re reduced be below zero. That is that is like wisp level value right there. Well, it's right uh, there. It's division error by zero. Error. Yeah, Hearthstone's gonna. Uh, Hearthstone's about to crash. Remember that crash when Emperor was released on Molten Giants? Uh, oh yeah. If it reduced the cost of Molten Giant, and you just couldn't play. Well, it props just to Blizzard for quick patching that. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it was as fast as the Warzone Commander. I'm pretty surprised. <laughs> was it a really, really quick fix? Now we just have to see whether or not they fix the Imp Gang boss as fast as they did the, uh, you know, Warzone Commander. Well, I feel like with the Imp Gang boss, it's not like it crashes your game, so I think that's a lot better. <laughs> yeah, it's not as big a deal, I'd venture to say. Well, this uh, this Emperor is like surprisingly annoying, because there's no good way to deal with it efficiently. Mm. And uh, Caldi Would you sacrifice again... your second Druid of the Claw into it, with uh, perhaps your other Druid of the Claw? Because I mean, the I Rogue think... can't deal with that 4-6 any better than... I think you might even be able to just go for phase here because you have to be thinking at this point my opponent doesn't have any cards so what's the best card he can top deck and I can't even think of something good that he can top deck at this point. Sprint into another prep into eviscerate and blade flurry together and then that would yes. be the game but that's about yes. it. I would agree that's probably the best but yeah unfortunately dog doesn't get anything and uh, he succumbs to this druid from Kaldi with Kazan Mystic. Yep, Kazan Mystic is the MVP against this rogue deck. Took away all the secrets. And uh, that means Kaldi's going to be up 2-1 against Dog, who still has his rogue, though, in the lineup with a mage as well. So we'll have to see what he opts for. Kaldi's left with Shaman. What do you think Dog will do? You said, you know, typically players keep their deck. Uh, and I think rogue is good enough against Shaman that you could keep it. And it's especially good punishing Fell Reavers from over your Shamans that play into it. Well, because this is going to... This is a league where in the King and Pro League, of course. Yeah. And not only do matches matter, but games matter. I think Dog will be picking the deck that has the best matchup against Shamans in general. Yeah, to get the tiebreaker score as high as possible, no matter what happens. If he loses or wins, he still needs to get uh, the best possible tiebreaker to move on to the playoffs, possibly. So we'll definitely see what he picks. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh yeah, he does pick Rogue. We are given a word from the admins. Sticking to Rogue, I think, is a wise choice. It is typically able to handle the totems and also deal with stuff like Whirling Zappomatic with backstabs as high seven so a lot of the early game is well handled by rogue i'm not actually sure how good the rogue versus mech shaman uh matchup is like i don't know i'm not sure how favored that is but rogue versus mid-range is certainly very favored because typically mid-range shaman can't uh put on enough pressure on the rogue um dog's last deck besides rogue is mage and if yep. it's a freeze mage that actually does very well against shaman as well and if it's a freeze mage, I would actually maybe even say dog is favored for the rest of the matchup. But if it's a mech mage, I would say that's like 50-50 against Shaman. And indeed, we're seeing from uh, 
We're getting to the game, and we're seeing from the opening hands that it's going to be Mech Shaman. It's going to be the Archon build of Mech Shaman. Yeah, the Fell Reaver is a dead giveaway. And Dog finds the Deadly Poison, but no Backstab SI, which is really important against Mech Shaman. If only to be able to remove the possible early Whirling's Appomattox and even go through Anoyotrons much more easily. Yeah, Those so guys are really problematic. The Anoyotrons, it's kind of like a Stone Claw Totem, but even worse. <laughs> Just look. Okay, nice way to think about it. Yeah, I guess it is a Stone Claw Totem. Dog's hand is, uh, it's alright. He has the coin, probably the most important card to get um, as Rogue. Uh, <laughs> it's funny it, to say, it's not even in his deck. It is the uh, most important card to get. But yeah, but he doesn't have an SI. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Esports. Yes, okay. All you have to do is get the SI with the coin, and suddenly your matchup against uh, anything really improves. Yeah, so even though Caldi, he, uh, he has a Mech Warper, he can't really play it too effectively here yeah because... you can't warp the mechs in this position you have to wait one turn i guess you could play the totem but you want to squeeze in that three damage a turn if you know, you know given the chance yeah. oh man and, yeah si is gonna come down and kelly's gonna be a little sad he's gonna have to use his rock biter weapon into the mech warper and that's like he's gonna like it's not just very little pressure coming from uh from Caldi at this point I think I do you. How much do you like the Rockbiter? Is it mandatory, or can you play an Oletron instead? The number two an Oletron. I think Rockbiter is by far a more like a safer line of play. Yeah, I like this line of play because next turn you can fit in the Inertron plus the Totem. Yeah, it's Whereas, one mana anyway. Yeah, like if the Mech Warper dies, for instance, this is just mm. more mana efficient. You could still do it. Oh, well, Dog is going to be looking for a Blade Flurry very soon. I can tell you that much. Oh, oh wow, on four. whoa. Wait, no, deadly, deadly sap. W would, he, would he ever do that? <laughs> would dog ever be crazy enough? I think you just sap it, right? You sap it and redagger. And then you punish him again by getting your full on well, deadly you, value. It's a preparation? No. Nah, no prep. Sad that days. Would be, that'd be pretty insane, though. Buy a teacher, prep, sap. Your opponent for nine How cards. good is Sap Eviscerate here? You give Eviscerate the Mech Warper right after that? The thing is, like, the Fell Reaver is bound to come back down right afterwards, right? So... Yeah, that's true. Like, you have to... You have to plan for a turn 5 Fell Reaver as well if you plan to Sap this. Yeah. Uh, and currently, he doesn't have a very good way to deal with it. That being said, if he doesn't Eviscerate this Mech Warper, a Fell Reaver plus a Neutron will come down, and that's... So that's even worse. worse yeah. Exactly. So Pyro Mace is gone, Spider Tank is gone, and Cogmaster is gone. Now, there's Dr. Balanus already in Caldi's hands, so he's not really too afraid um, of not having a really solid play for the late game. Because usually the problem in the Fell Reaver is that your biggest threats get milled, and then you lack steam. But one of his best cards is in there, and there he goes. He just picks up a second one. Yeah, so wow. for... Those of you who didn't really pay attention to Sea Story Cup, this is, uh, like I said, the new Mech Shaman from Team Archon. And it tops out curving at exactly the cards that you see on screen right now, Dr. Boom and Ragnaros. Uh, its other big threats are the two Fell Reavers and the Doom Hammer. So just a, a very aggressive deck right here. Yeah, and honestly, like, I think Dog's position is horrible. The Inogatrons are a big problem for him. Uh, if only to be able to take out something like a Mech Warper with his weapon with Deadly Poison, but he can't. Nothing he does is currently very effective. Like, the cards that are getting milled are relevant as far as Caldi is concerned. His biggest threat's already on the board, and he finds the Lothep to seal the spells. Wow. Okay, wow. yeah, that is, that is game, right? Yeah, just trying like a god here. Like, in the previous <laughs> game, remember, remember in the previous game, I said yeah. the three most important cards for... Or th for the most, for the most important cards for any deck against Rogue, are the Lothab, the Doctor Boom, and the Ragnaros. And the Ragnaros, yeah. Yeah, and he, <laughs> he, he drew all three of the important cards in his deck. Wow. He... Oh man, and you know what? It's all thanks to the Fell Reaver, because it milled the cards in between them to make sure that he was going to get them. That's true. They were spaced out at four, right? So Fell Reaver takes three out, then he gets the, what he needs. So I think there's an algorithm that spaces them out by three, so that if you play Fell Reaver on four with a Mech Warper, you're guaranteed to get your biggest threats um, for the rest of the game, as long as one card is played per turn. Yeah, so congratulations to Caldi. He takes it all the way up to 4-3. And Dog is actually also left right now with a 4-3 record. So 
pretty much at the same place right now, and yep. I believe right now they're around uh, they're around four to fifth in the league. Uh, yep, they were they were swapping places after that. So Dog is going to be taking Caldi's place at fifth, and Caldi's going to place uh, at fourth instead of Dog. So they're just swapping places. Both are still in the top five. So very good possibility that they move on to the uh, at least season two of KPL going forward if they still maintain a good score. Yep. So yeah, again, congratulations to Caldi, and we're actually going to be taking a short break. When we come back, we will. Uh, We'll, we'll have a really fun match between me and Noxious, actually. So Yeah, we're going to show you uh, very refined decks. If you understand what's going on uh, when we play our decks, you know more than we do. So just be prepared for some, hopefully, pretty good shenanigans. On this note, King Gwynpool is going to keep going. Don't go anywhere.